Grace and peace, family. Pastor Tone here from Transformation Church. I want to thank all of our Transformation Church family, as well as all of our visitors online for joining us for this online worship experience. Just wanted to give a quick update on what to expect. We'll be together for about an hour or so together. Right after this video, we'll jump into a time of authentic worship where we'll worship Jesus, our great God and King together. After that, we'll have a life-giving message where you'll get a message of hope and encouragement as we navigate these very trying times together. Also, we want you to know that at Transformation Church, we believe that we should not shift down into self-preservation during this time, but we should serve our community well in this time. So at the end of today's message, we'll have an update for you about ways that we are engaging our community in this very difficult time. And we actually want to invite you right up front to join us as we love on our community at this time. And so on your screen, you'll see three ways that you can give. You can give through text. You can give by sending um, a check to the address there on the screen, or you can just simply give online. But we want to invite you to be a part of this mission because we believe that we are better together. Now, with all of that being said, we want you to prepare yourself to enjoy a great time of worship with us. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My name is Ahmed. And uh, this morning we just want to lead you in a time of worship. In the midst of everything that's going on, we know that we have a father who loves us, who cares desperately for us, who's there for us. He's never abandoned us. He's promised that he would never forsake us. So even in our time of absence in fellowship physically, we thank God for the medium that he's given us to be able to um, congregate in this way virtually to be able to worship him and to be able to rejoice in him because he is good and we don't have a single doubt about that. So would you jo join us for a moment and just worship of this great God and King who we love and we serve. Thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night as you tell me that you're pleased and that I, I'm never alone. You're a good, good father. Who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. And I've seen many searching for answers, for That we're all searching for answers Only you provide Cause you know just what we need Before we, we say a word You're a good, good father It's who you are It's who you are It's who you are You're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, God, you're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are. can hardly think as you call yeah. me deep 
Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still as you call me. Deeper still into love. Love, love. God, you call. Psalm 27, verse 1 says, Lord, you are the strength of my life. God, you are the strength of our life. Lord, you are a light and salvation. Whom shall we fear? God, you are the strength of our lives. Of whom shall we be afraid? God, we trust you, even now. The Lord is my life, salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
Whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. Oh, I will trust in you, my God. I will trust in you. Oh. Sing with me, say. The Lord is my life and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? Nobody, nobody. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. Say. I will wait on you. In my waiting, I will trust in you, Lord. I will trust. Who else can I turn to, God? I will trust in you. The psalm goes on to say, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Can you help me say, I, I will, will remain confident in this. I will Who shall I fear? Who shall I fear? Said, Who shall I be afraid? Who shall I be afraid? Nobody, nobody. The Lord is my life and salvation. Who shall I fear? Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? I will wait. I will wait on you. I will wait on you, my God. I will wait. I will trust in the one who has all power in his hands. Hey. I will trust in you, my God. Hey. I will trust in you. Proclaim this. Said I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. You are my refuge, God. I will remain. Say. You are our light and our salvation. Whom shall we fear? God, you are the strength of our very lives. Of whom shall we be afraid, oh God? No one, nobody, not coronavirus, nothing, God. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. We bless you, God, and we lift your name on high. Hallelujah. Sing this with us, family. We send our hope. On you, we send our hope on your love. We send our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. Can you proclaim that this evening, this morning? Huh? We send our hope on you. We send our hope. Oh. 
hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. Who else can we turn to? Who else can we depend on God? So I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Can you help me sing? I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the living, I will. I will. I will. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. You are faithful, God. I will. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Now stay right there for a minute. I will. I will. I will. Confident in this, I will. I will see. In spite of what it looks like, said I will, I will remain my God. confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. What's your name, Jesus? Magnify you, God. Oh, Worthy are you, Lord. In spite of what's going on right now, you're good, you're good, you're good. Self-existent God, you're still good. So you're still good. Hey, so you're still good. 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 You're still good, God. You're still good. You're still good. You're still good, God. You're still good. 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 So I will remain confident in this. I will see. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In the land of the living. In the land of the living. In the land of the living bless your name Jesus while we're still here let's just give him praise hallelujah while we still have breath in our bodies he deserves he still deserves praise God, we're trusting in you right now. God, we're looking to the hill from which come, comes our help, Father God. We need you. You are our refuge. You are our strength. You are our peace. You are our joy, Father. Hallelujah to your name, Jesus. Bless your name, Father. We thank you for this time of worship. We thank you, Lord God, that you have allowed people like us, Father God, to give you all the praise and all the worship and all the glory and all the honor that you deserve, Father. God, you're self-existent, Father God. Nothing created you, Father. That means you really don't need us, Father, but you choose to use us for your glory, God. And for, for that, God, we want to say thank you. God, we desire to be instruments of your praise. Even louder instruments right now in the midst of what's going on, Father God. Would you, would you do that, Father God? Would you make us louder instruments of praise for your glory? 
as people hurt right now, as people are suffering, as people are, are in fear right now, Father God, pray that they will hold on to this song. God, you are our light and our salvation. God, you are our strength. There's none other. There's none other, Father God. So I pray, Father God, that we will really depend on you in the name of Jesus, Father. Have your way, we pray. We love you. We glorify you, God. In Jesus' name. Hey, I want to welcome everybody for joining us for Transformation Church Online. Shout out to our Transformation Church family, as well as all of you who are visiting us. If it's your first time visiting us and joining us for service, we want you to know that we're glad that you're here. Drop a comment down in the comment section so that we can just get to know a little bit about you and, and reach out to you during this particular time. My name is Pastor Tone. I'm one of the pastors here at Transformation Church, and we're really excited that you're with us today. And we're excited because we have a great word of hope and encouragement for you in these trying times that we find ourselves facing. So I want to ask that you would pray for me right from your living room or at your computer screen, wherever you are. And I'll pray for you that God would meet us in the preaching and teaching of his word. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. Thanking you so much for your word. For your word is a lamp unto our feet and it's a light unto our path. I pray for all of those who are watching right now and I pray that the seed of your word would fall on good ground. Lord God, and that it would produce fruit in their lives. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, that none of us would be hearers of your word only deceiving ourselves, but that we would be effectual doers. Oh God, in these trying times, we ask that the truth of your word would so resonate with our hearts that fear would flee as we grow in faith and declare our confidence in you, our great conquering God and King. Oh God, we ask that you would visit us today through the preaching and teaching of your word. Do it for your name's sake and your glory. Dear God, I do not account my life as anything valuable nor precious to myself. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task you've given me, the task of testifying to the good news of the gospel. Lord, would you get your glory in the lives of your people? It's in Jesus' name we pray. Let the church of the living God say amen. 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 So last week, I told you I would be continuing our love song sermon series in the book of Songs of Solomon. However, as I spent time in prayer and talking to some other leaders in the church, had a really great conversation with my wife this week. Um, and after considering what the World Health Organization has determined to be a global pandemic, it became very clear to me that the Lord was calling an audible for today's message. Many of you are aware that for weeks now we have been facing unprecedented times. Never before have we experienced a global pandemic like this. The COVID-19 virus is not only the talk of the town, but it has become the word around the world. The mere threat of this infection has led to nations across the globe wisely shutting down schools, closing churches and other places of worship, places of business. We've even canceled a number of social events. The coronavirus has single handedly ushered in us into a culture, a cancel culture on steroids, if you will, for the purpose of social distancing. Sports events have been canceled. Many of our vacation plans have been canceled. I was at the grocery store the other day and they had a sign up that says toilet paper has been canceled. It seems that just about everything has been canceled except for our bills. We've been quarantined to our homes. Sadly, people have been laid off or lost their jobs. And even more sadly, some of you may have even lost loved ones in this, in, to this infection. The truth is that we are learning to navigate new normals, all of us. I think we would all agree that these can be confusing and chaotic times. Fear of the unknown can begin to cause our faith in God to fizzle if we're not careful. The panic of the moment can be seen in the chronic bulk buyers, the long checkout lines and the empty shelves at our grocery stores. But the question I've been asking myself in all of this is, where can one find peace in the midst of all of the panic? 
Where is one to find hope in the midst of all the headlines? Where can one find confidence in the midst of all the chaos? And the answer is simple. We must cling to God's truth as we face these trials, family. In dark times, we must even the more draw near to God and his word. For the psalmist tells us very clearly, I might add, that, 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 that his word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So let's turn now to God's word for some illumination and guidance for the times that we face. Our main text for today will be Psalms 27, verses 1 through 4. Psalms 27, verses 1 through 4. If you're uh, new to church or maybe new to the Bible, uh, the book of Psalms is about in the middle of the Bible. Um, it's right um, after the book of Job, and it's right before the book of Proverbs. So if you hit the book of Ecclesiastes, you've gone too far, all right? All right, so you can get your electronic devices, get at your, uh, and pull out your Bible apps, or if you're just old school like me and you want to actually pull out your Bible, you can do that too, whatever is most comfortable for you. Psalms 27, verses 1 through 4, I'll read for you here. It says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Praise be to God for his word. Brothers and sisters, I want to preach from this text, from the topic of confidence in chaos. Confidence in chaos. So I grew up right here in the city of Trenton. And I can remember living on 198 West Hanover Street. And while we enjoyed some great times as a family in this community, we also faced some very dark and difficult times. In fact, I can remember days coming home from school and the house would be cold because mama didn't have no money for oil. I remember days coming home from school and the cupboards would be bare because mama didn't have any money for food. And I remember days, even um, times where the lights were off because mama didn't have any money for PSC&G. But as I look back on those dark times, I remember there was one constant in the midst of the chaos for our family. And that constant was my mother. She had this way of carrying herself. She had this character about her that gave us and my, me and my siblings this sense of confidence because we knew we could trust Mom Dukes to keep us no matter what the chaos or the crisis was that we were facing. Why do I tell you that story? I tell you that story because this is essentially the message of Psalms 27. It's the message that Psalm 27 holds out to us as we face the COVID-19 crisis. We can place our confidence in our trustworthy God when we face trying times such as we are in. To quote H.B. Charles, he says, the message of Psalm 27 is simply this. We can face anything so long as Jesus is our everything. We can face anything so long as Jesus is our everything. See, whenever you come to a passage of scripture, you want to ask yourself at least two questions. Who is the author and, and, and what the, what's the occasion to which the author is writing? The author of this particular psalm, Psalm 27, is David. He was actually the author of a number of psalms in the Bible. There was a great deal of speculation among commentators as to what season of life David was in when he wrote this psalm. They don't know whether it was before he was king, maybe during the time where Saul was king and he was chasing after him or after he was king and maybe during the time where his son Absalom was chasing him out of the kingdom. We don't know. The truth is we don't know the historical background, but that doesn't rob us of the rich truth that this psalm has for us. Psalms 27 is a psalm of trust and confidence in God despite times of crisis. Here's what we do know about the psalms. David wrote this psalm during a time of trouble in his life. David was facing all kinds of fear-inducing circumstances with enemies all around him. 
David was in a season where danger, threat, and chaos seems to have been everywhere. Yet despite what he was facing, he emphatically declares his confidence in the Lord. Peep what he says in verse 1. He says, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? The first thing that this text lays out for us as it relates to how we can find confidence in the mix of the chaos is it shows us that we are to declare our confidence in God. Declare our confidence in God. In the text, David shows us a declaration of confidence in God. David starts by declaring a threefold testimony of the steadfast confidence and trust he has in God's character. He says, the Lord is my light, my salvation, and my stronghold. What does he mean by the Lord is his light, his salvation, and his stronghold? I'm glad you asked because it's in my notes. (laughs) The Lord is my light. This is the only place in the Old Testament where light is used to describe the Lord. Light here refers to God's truth, his his goodness, his divine revelation and illumination. The fact that David declares confidence in the Lord as his life's light helps us understand that David was facing some dark situation. David in real time is facing threat and danger from enemies, and we find ourselves facing the threat and danger of the COVID-19 virus. Yet in this dark and dismal world of enemies and infection, David reminds us in the text that we serve a God who illuminates. As this pandemic runs rampant, David reminds us in the text that our Lord is a God whose light shines and radiates. In a fallen world, when people are lamenting the loss of loved ones, David declares that the Lord is my light. Listen, David, Lord is the same God who during creation said, let there be light. David's Lord is the same God who in the incarnation, the apostle John referred to as the true light who had come into the world. David's Lord is the same God who in salvation moves us by grace alone, through faith alone, from the domain of darkness and into the marvelous light. David says, I may be facing dark times, but I ain't got nothing to fear because my focus is on my Lord who is my light. See, some of us lack confidence during this time because we are too focused on the crisis. (laughs) We're so focused on the crisis that we ain't focused on who Christ is. It's wise for us to know enough about what's going on in the world in order to protect ourselves. But do we really have to listen to all of the headlines? I want to encourage some people that some of what you need to do is just turn off the TV. Shut down your social media and set your focus back on the Father. Some of us are overwhelmed by fear because we are focused on the wrong stuff. David's focus here in the text is on the Lord as his light in dark times. And when fear is gripping your heart, you need to set your focus on the light of God's love for you in the gospel. Now, why do we need to set our hearts on God's love for us in the gospel when we fear, when, when we feel fear gripping in on our hearts. I'll tell you why, because the Apostle Paul in the New Testament says this. He says that we need to allow the light of God's perfect love to shine in our hearts. You know why? Because God's perfect love casts out all fear. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, is what Paul told his young buck in the faith, Timothy, but of power, love, and a sound mind. If you want to declare your confidence in God in the midst of the chaos, you must fix your focus on him as the Lord and light of your life during these dark days. But what else is implied here? By the Lord is his light. David goes on to say that the Lord is my salvation. Now, this word salvation here in the text It's not a reference to the forgiveness of sin. It's actually a reference, if you will, to the fact that 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 of God's rescuing grace. It's 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 a reference to God's divine protection. It's, It's a reference to the fact that God spares us from harm. And so David says, not only is the Lord my light, he is my salvation. He is my protection. 
I know that there is peril all around me and my enemies are encamped and surrounding me. But David says, I have confidence to stand on my Lord because he is not only my light, he is my protection. I love what the psalmist in Psalm 46 one says, he says, God is our refuge and strength, a very help, present help in trouble. David said, yeah, it's dark out here, but I got illumination. Yeah, it's dangerous out here, but I have divine protection. The Lord is my light and my salvation. As David reflects on these three aspects of God's character, the third thing that he says, he says, the Lord is the stronghold of my life. The stronghold of my life. In other words, the Lord is his strength. The Lord is his hiding place. The Lord is his safe place. He compares his fears to the God that he has faith in at the end of the text. And he asks himself not once but twice after he reflects on the fact that the Lord is his light. The Lord is his salvation. The Lord is his stronghold. He Ask himself some rhetorical questions. He says, whom shall I fear? <laughs> whom shall I be afraid of? In other words, when your faith and confidence lives in the Lord who is light, salvation and stronghold, your fears have to be evicted. Why? Because crippling fear and confident faith cannot dwell in the same heart. I'm going to say that again. Crippling fear and confident faith cannot dwell in the same heart. And so as we reflect on God as our light, as our salvation, as our stronghold, the one who holds strong to us, the more we are aware of his grip on us, the more fear has to let loose of its grip on us. So the first thing we learn about where to find confidence in these chaotic times, in this time of crisis, is to by God's grace and through his spirit, we must declare our confidence in God. Declare our confidence in God. Now, before moving on to verses three and four, I, I want to point something out in verses one and two that rocked me in my preparation. Look at look at it with me, if you will. Note the possessive pronouns that David uses in verses one and two. He says, my light, my salvation, my life. This is important because it reminds us that David is not some pagan who just parrots knowledge about God. No. The possessive pronouns in the passage remind us that David has a personal relationship with God. This is important because some of us want God's rescue, but we don't want a relationship with him. We want his protection, but we don't want to face the fact that we have a need for his pardon because we are broken sinners. Listen, I know you're in your living room right now, but, but, but I have to ask you a question that's burning in my heart for you. Do you know him? Do you know him personally? Have you responded to his love for you in the gospel by repenting of your sin and turning to Christ as your Savior and Lord? You see, if you want to have confidence in this crisis, it starts with a relationship with Christ if you don't know it. Listen, you can't declare confidence in a Christ you don't know. You can't rely on a Christ you don't have a relationship with. And so the first step for you, if you don't know Christ, is to enter into a relationship with him. And the Bible says that if you confess your mouth, that with your mouth, that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Saved from what? You might ask. I'm glad you asked because it's in my notes. Saved from yourself. Saved from your sin. Saved from the wrath of God and saved into an eternal relationship with Christ as you place your confidence in him alone for salvation. David says he is my salvation, my rescue from danger. He is my comprehensive protection plan. So I have no reason to fear, as the song says. You see, the benefits of illumination and protection are a direct result of having a genuine relationship with God. I'm going to say that again. The benefits of God's illumination in your life and God's protection in your life are a result of having a genuine relationship with God. Yes, God reigns on the just and unjust. In a general sense, all of us are recipients of God's grace, but only those who have a relationship with Jesus can be a recipient of his special grace, his special forgiveness, his special mercy. And so if you don't know him, the pronouns of the passage are personal. God wants to have a personal relationship with you. 
Moving on to verses two through three. David says, when evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. I love it. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. Not only do we need to declare our confidence in God, we need to pray and ask God to give us a durable confidence in God. A durable confidence in God. This is what David had. That's my second point. Look at what he, here in verses two through three, we see that David is up against evildoers and enemies. As a man of war, David would have had his fair share of enemies to face. These are not just enemies, though. They have put together a concerted effort against David, the text implies. They are his adversaries who are opposed to him in just about every way. He uses animalistic language to describe the way that they want to destroy and devour him. Verse 3 says that they have encamped against him and they are ready to wage war against him. Yet we see the durability of David's confidence in the Lord. Despite these fear inducing circumstances with enemies all around him, he declares, my heart will not fear, yet I will be confident. In a time where fear could have crippled David, he displays a faith and confidence in the character of the Lord, his God. Can I encourage somebody today? If fear is seeking to cripple your heart in this time, I want to encourage you to declare your faith and confidence, not in your circumstances, but in the unchanging, unshakable, unbreakable character of Christ. Circumstances are shifty, but Christ is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. David says, my heart will not fear, yet I will be confident because my confidence is not in my circumstances. My confidence in the character of the Lord, my God, who is my light, my salvation and my stronghold. David had a durable confidence in the Lord, despite the chaos all around him. And here's why, because even when his enemies came against him, he testifies in the text that because of the Lord, they stumbled and fell. I love it. They came against him, but because of the Lord, they stumbled and fell. In other words, when his enemies bucked up, God showed up. That ought to encourage somebody today. And as the Lord showed up for David in a time of threat, we must trust him to do the same for us, family. He knows about the coronavirus. He knows about your fears. He knows about your doubts. And, just, and, and he also knows that the enemy wants to do nothing more but to capitalize on the moment because he's an opportunist. He wants to take all the fear and panic of the moment to try to weaken your faith, to weaken your resolve, to make you put your confidence in yourself and not in the Lord, to make you put your trust in your own self and not trust in the Lord with all your heart, all your mind and all your strength. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord. And as the Lord showed up for David in a time of threat, we must trust him to do the same for us. He alone gives us strength to withstand the ways of the enemy and how he attacks our hearts and minds in these uncertain times. The enemy wants us all. He wants to he wants to use all of the fear and panic to weaken our faith. But the Lord, who is our light, our salvation and our stronghold, gives us strength to not just declare our confidence, but to have a durable confidence when the enemy strikes against us. See, David's confidence was battle tested. It endured the sudden attacks of the enemy. It endured the strategic attacks on the enemy. But his confidence, let me be clear, was durable, not because of his strength. His confidence was durable because whenever the enemy attacked, God intervened on his behalf. And when the enemy attacks and we feel weak in these trying times, we must remember to seek strength by standing in the Lord. You know, we live in a day right now where everybody is saying, you know, Choose faith over fear. Choose prayer over panic. Choose to worship over worry. But my question, the question that many people are asking is how? How do I choose faith over fear? I feel like faith, I, think, I feel like fear is a stubborn emotion sometimes. You close the door in its face and then it jumps in the window. How do I continue to fight for faith in these times that are fear inducing? I'm glad you asked. Because the Apostle Paul gives us some wisdom as to how we can find strength to overcome our fear 
in these difficult times. As he talks about the armor of God in Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, I want you to just listen to what he says. He says, finally, you want to be strong? He says, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. He plotting against us. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all you can, stand firm. See, if you want to have the ability to stand strong in this time of sickness, then seek your strength, not in yourself, but in the Lord whose armor protects us from the threats of the enemy, who wants us to respond with fear when God has called us to be a people who respond by faith. So we've learned so far that if we want to have confidence in these times of chaos and uncertainty, we must declare our confidence in God and his character. We must ask God to give us a durable confidence in God because fear can sometimes be a stubborn emotion and we need God to continue to empower us to overcome it by his spirit's power. Thirdly, not only do we need to declare our confidence in God, seek a durable confidence in God, but thirdly, we need to ask God for a desire to commune. We need communion with God in this time of crisis. Verse four, David says, one thing have I asked of the Lord that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I'm going to read it one more time because I love it. One thing have I asked of the Lord that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I love it. David was a one thing type of person with a one thing type of worship. By the way, that's the only type of worship that our Lord accepts. An exclusive one thing type of worship. I'm reminded in this language of one thing of the blind man in John chapter nine, after Jesus heals him, the people are asking him, you know, was he was Jesus a sinner or not who healed him? And the blind man says to, to them, he responds to them, he says, I don't know whether he was a sinner or not. All I know, the one thing that I know is that I once was blind, but now I see the Apostle Paul in Philippians 4, 13, he says, but one thing, forgetting those things that are behind, I press forward now towards the, high, high, towards the prize of the high calling that is in Jesus Christ. And here we see David in the, in the psalm saying, the one thing I have asked of the Lord that I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David delights in the beauty of God. He desires to dwell with and talk with God. David is not just after what God can give him. He's after God himself. This is part of why I believe the scriptures calls David a man after God's own heart. See, David wasn't called a man after God's own heart because he was perfect. No, David was flawed and sinful and toe up just like you and I in desperate need of God's grace. But nonetheless, he had this one thing mindset. He says, I want to be in your temple. I know my enemies are attacking me. I know they want to devour me. I know they have surrounded me, but I don't want to be so focused on the broken problems around me that I cannot focus on your beauty. Sometimes we are so concerned about what we see that we forget that we have been justified, made right with God, and the just shall live not by sight, but by faith. David has chaos all around him. Enemies on every side. There's a threat around him but he doesn't let it hinder his desire to be with the Lord. His desire to ask questions of the Lord in his time of difficulty, to inquire of the Lord, to keep his eyes fixated on the beauty of the Lord and all that he has done for him. David would have not, not allowed the dangers around him to distract him for depending on the Lord and communion. And neither should you and I. In a time of social distancing, I imagine that many of you like me, miss being able to dwell in the house of the Lord, 
to just seek him, to gaze upon his beauty, not just simply to seek him, but also to just do it together in biblical community. I had a good brother from uh, Fellowship Capital City, Pastor Brennan Coughlin. He put out a devotion this week that really blessed my heart. He was talking about Psalms 42. He was talking about the psalmist in that particular passage who was likely a worship leader. And he's articulating his desire to lead the people of God in worship. But there's, uh, most commentators believe that, that, that there's some issue, there's some concern hindering him from being able to lead the people of God in worship at the temple. And, and, and the psalmist is, 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 is expressing his, his longing for the, the, the ability to, to yet again go back into the temple and worship and seek the face of God and sing songs with the people of God. And I imagine, I imagine that many of you feel that way right now. You feel the weight of not being able to worship together in person. We can't greet each other with warm hugs and firm handshakes. And we've had to get creative about ways to connect with each other, with all of the important and wise social, social distancing measures we've had to take. Now, while we thank God for the gift of technology and being able to gather like this online, praise God for that. The truth of the matter is that nothing can replace us praying together and locking arms together in person. If you're missing worshiping with the saints in person and gazing upon the beauty of the Lord together, I want you to listen to the encouraging words of Paul Tripp on how communion with God sustains us during, can sustain us during this time of social distance. He says, know this, your greatest friend, your deepest lover, and your sweetest companion knows no distance between him and you. He draws especially near to the lonely and the brokenhearted in times of crisis like this. Listen, if you're wrestling with loneliness and missing meeting together in community, I want to encourage you to commune with God, family. Seek him as the main priority of your life. In fact, I want to encourage you right where you're sitting, whether you're in your living room, at your computer screen, let's just get up together. The last time I read the word of God, it says that where two or three are gathered in his name, there he will be in the midst. And I believe he can do it even through technology. Let's just seek his face. Let's just be one thing minded people who just want to be near him, who want to just inquire him, who want to gaze upon his beauty. Let's reflect on his goodness. Let's reflect on his love. As the, as the Lord who is our light, as the Lord who is our salvation, as the Lord who is the stronghold of our life. Let's just seek the Lord. Let's just seek the Lord. While we have to be distant from each other, God is never distant from his people. Never distant from his people. Let's ask the Lord for a greater desire in this season of social distancing to simply Commune with him in the midst of the crisis. Let's set our gaze on him as our God and king. Because communion with God helps us live lives of faith and confidence in God. Communion with God helps us live lives of faith and confidence in God. So today we've learned that if we want to be able to have confidence in the midst of the chaotic times we live in, we must declare our confidence in God. We must seek God for a durable confidence in him. And we must ask God to heighten our desire by the power of his spirit to commune with God more consistently. As I close, and all this talk about the social distancing due to the global pandemic and infectious disease, COVID-19, I'm reminded that there is a greater worldwide pandemic that needs to be addressed. It's called the infectious disease the Bible refers to as sin. This infection is not new on the scene like the coronavirus. Its origin goes way back to the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve, our forefathers, under the deception of the enemy, disobeyed God. And the infection of sin spread across the entire human race, causing, causing distance between ourselves, distance between you and I, but also most importantly, it caused distance between us and God himself. Our sin separated us from God because he is holy and we are not. Yet God in his grace saw us dead in our sins and distant from him and drew near to us in the gospel, defying all the rules of social distancing when he sent his beloved son, Jesus, to cure us from the infectious disease called sin by lovingly taking our place at the cross. 
Then he was buried and then he rose victoriously three days later with all power in his hand. And now he stands ready to offer forgiveness and confidence and hope and purpose and meaning to anybody who trusts in him as Savior and Lord. See, when we by faith trust in his finished work on our behalf, we no longer have to be distant from him, family, no matter where we are. In the words of the Apostle Paul, written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the believer can confidently say, Romans 8, 35 through 39, look what he says. What shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written for your sake we are being killed all the day long we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered no Paul says in all things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us for I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers help me Holy Spirit nor things present nor things to come that would include the coronavirus nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I know that there's a lot of social distancing going on and I know some of you feel lonely and you miss meeting in person but I want to encourage you that if you are a believer in Christ there is no distance between you and God because Paul declares under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that there is now therefore nothing that can separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. That means the love of God can meet you right in your living room. That means the love of God can meet you right in your anxiety. Your anxiety, your depression cannot separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Your fears that cripple you cannot separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. You ought to give God some praise. You ought to honor him that in this time of social distancing, he has, he knows no distance between you and him. Thanks be to God because of what Jesus has done. Jesus, who is the light of the world. Jesus, who is our deliverance and salvation. Jesus, who is our protection from the wrath of God, our protection no matter what happens in this pandemic. Jesus, our anchor in this age of anxiety. Jesus, who is still Jehovah Jireh, our provider for those of you who has lost jobs to the, to, uh, in the midst of all of this crisis. Jesus, who is still Jehovah Rapha for those of you who are sick or who have loved ones who are sick. Jesus, who is still Jehovah Shammah. In other words, he is the God who is there for those of you who feel isolated and alone right now. He says in Hebrews 13, Father, he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And Jesus, who is still Jehovah Shalom for those of you who are struggling with anxiety and struggling with depression and, and struggling with fear. Jehovah Shalom simply means that he is our peace. You can be anxious for nothing, but through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, make your request known unto God and he promises that the peace of God will guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Remember that as long as the Lord is our light, illuminating the way in these dark times, as long as the Lord is our salvation, he will deliver you from your fears and strengthen your faith. As long as the Lord's presence is with you, you can rest assured that his power and his protection is with you. While he doesn't promise that, he, that any of us will not get sick, he does promise that he will always be with us. Communing with him and re reflecting on him and his unchanging character in these uncertain times can help us find hope amidst these headlines, peace and all the panic and confidence in all of the chaos. This is God's word for us. We are called to be a people who declare our confidence in him during this time of crisis. We are called to be a people who have a durable confidence in our God because he is faithful. And we are called to leverage this season and by asking God to help us beef up our desire to simply commune with him, to gaze upon his beauty and inquire in his temple. So how do we apply all of this? Here's my one application, family. As you're watching online, seek the Lord relentlessly. Not simply for his healing, but we want to seek him for his heart. Not simply for him to stop the virus, although we pray that he will stop this pandemic. Amen. But we don't simply ask for him to stop the pandemic. We want a desire for him. Seek him as the main priority of our lives. Dwell with him. Abide with him. Walk with him. Communion with God is the best way to find confidence in God. Family. That's why we want to have communion with him. 
Because communion with God is the best way to find confidence in God in these times of crisis. And here at Transformation, we actually want to help you with this, family. We believe that communion with God in this time of crisis is so crucial for your life in this moment that we actually want to help you with this. And so um, courtesy of Dwell, we want to offer you a free 60 day subscription for, our, for the Dwell app. Dwell is an a, a, a app, a, a devotional app um, that they're giving out to churches like ours in these times of crisis to encourage God's people to seek deeper communion with God in the midst of these trying times. And so at the end of this video, what you'll find is right down in the description, we're going to have the link for you to simply click the link and, and download this app so you can have a free 60 day description simply for you to pursue a time where you simply, like David, seek to dwell with God, abide with God, focus on God, gaze upon the beauty of God. That's our application, family. Make sure that you look down into the description and be sure to get this app so that you can learn how to dwell with God. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. I pray for all of those watching online right now, those who are struggling with fear, Lord God. If they know you, Lord God, I pray in the name of Jesus that they would know, as David articulated, that we have no reason to fear because you are our light in these dark times. You are our salvation, which means you are our deliverance in these difficult times, Lord God, and you are our stronghold. In other words, you have a strong grip on us, and therefore our fear must flee. I pray in the name of Jesus that we would be a people of faith and not fear, that we would be a people of prayer and not panic, that we would be a people of worship and not worry, Lord God. I pray in in the name of Jesus for the person that feels lonely right now, dear, dear God. In the name of Jesus, would you let them know that you say in your word that you would be with your people low and even until the end of the age. Encourage their hearts. Give them a desire to seek you, to gaze upon your beauty, to want to be with you, to simply want to know you and the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering, Lord God. I, I pray in the name of Jesus for, 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 for the person, Lord God, who just simply um, doesn't know you, Lord God, and they want to know you. Would you remove Move the scales from their eyes. Would you shine the light of the gospel in their hearts and move them from death to life through faith in Christ? Move them from the domain of darkness into your marvelous light. Lord God, I ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who is our light, who is our salvation, and who is the stronghold of our life. It's in Jesus' name we pray that the church of the living God say amen. You ought to give him some praise, family. Right there where you are, you ought to give him some praise. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word.
Grace and Peace Transformation Church family and all of our visitors online. Thank you so much for joining us for our online worship experience today. I pray that the authentic worship and the life-changing message encouraged you in this time of uncertainty. I wanted to let you know that even though our building is shut down, the church has not shut down. We're still committed to serving our community in a number of ways. In fact, I'm out here at the Sam Naples Center right here in the city of Trenton where we've just worked with our partner organization and church, Central Church in Ewing with the Recreation Department here in Trenton to provide 200, over 200 meals for kids in our community who will pick up their meals right from this location. In addition to that, we just launched our Trenton's Finest Scholarship where we're looking to um, give a scholarship to a Trenton Central High School student. So if you know a Trenton Central High School student, I want to encourage you. We're going to leave the link for the scholarship application right here under this video. You can send it to people who you know who might be interested in the scholarship. In addition to that, we're working with the YMCA for their Grab and Go Meals program. We've donated to that outreach where they are at eight different locations in the city um, giving out meals for breakfast and lunch to kids in our community because we want to deal with the issue of food insecurity in this time of crisis. Also, we're a part of an initiative in our community trying to uh, raise money for some Chromebooks for kids in our community. Um, it said that 11,000 plus kids in our school district um, and only half of them, up to half of them, have a computer at home where they can do their homework from. So those are just a few ways that we're serving in our community and we want to invite you to be able to join us as we continue our mission even though the doors are closed, amen. And so with that being said, right on um, the screen, you'll you'll see we have three ways that you can participate in our mission by giving. You can give through text, you can give online, and you can give just by sending a check to the address that's there on the screen. Again, we love you. Thank you so much for joining us for this worship experience. And remember that God wants to transform your life personally and use you as an agent of transformation in your community. Grace and peace. See you next week.